Kept you waiting, huh? Aloha, everybody. It is I, the great Clement, and ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at a Nintendo DS title that has been long requested for many, many years. <laughs> this is Mega Man ZX for the Nintendo DS, a spiritual successor to the Mega Man Zero series on the Game Boy Advance, which I did a Let's Play of, oh, back in 2009, late 2010. <laughs> Because I could not record DS games properly, uh, that's why I held this off so long. But now that I have the technology to record DS and 3DS titles, uh, I figured it's about time we finally move on to this series. It's about time I show you the fantastic awesomeness that is Mega Man ZX. So last week I uploaded a video asking people who we were going to be playing as in this game, as well as who we were going to be playing as in the sequel game. And... Um, there was a straw poll, and I basically, we had the choice between the boy, Vent, and the girl, Ale. They had the exact same combat, they had the exact same boss fights, the same kind of backstory, and voters decided that we're going to be playing as Vent, and then in Mega Man ZX Advent, we're going to be playing as Ash. I had a, a very nice straw poll going on last week. Um, it was very neck and neck, actually. Many times during the straw poll, the, you guys were divided on it completely. Like, sometimes the, the votes would actually tie, and then it would be like 50-50, uh, except for like the Sanic option, which I, I added as a joke, but uh, <laughs> that got like 3% of the vote. Sanic is not playable in this game, I'm sorry. <laughs> But, um, majority ruled, you know. Uh, everyone wants to see Vent in this game, and they're gonna see Ash in the sequel game. Uh, so what does that mean for Ale? Um, basically, I'm going to show you what Ale's story was like in an extra video after the playthrough is over. Uh, but really, there's not too many drastic differences between Vent and Ale. I mean, they're both a human with brown hair who works for Jiro, the guy in the red outfit over there, and uh, they're both like 14, 15 around there. They both lost their mother in a maverick raid over 10 years ago. Um, when they're in actual combat and they're actually in the bio medals and stuff, their sprites look pretty damn identical. Like, thank God this game has some voice acting in regards to when you attack people, because if you just asked me to look at the sprite and tell you which one is which, I don't think I could, honestly. Again, they go through the exact same boss fights, they go through, they get the same kind of upgrades, they find the same kinds of secrets. Um, I think there's like one side quest that's different, one or two side quests that are different. And um, there's like minor differences that you obviously could not notice, at least I didn't notice when I played the game. Uh, for example, uh, Vent and Ale, when they crawl around on the ground, Ale is slightly faster than Vent. But again, it's not really noticeable. And supposedly, uh, Ale takes a lot more knockback when she gets hit than Vent does. But again, I never really saw that. So, uh, I did a playthrough of both characters, and then I went on to, like, the internet to see what was different about the two characters, and I was surprised at every one of them. I was just like, really? Because I didn't notice that, but whatever. Um, so, you know, it's just, worth, it's just worth mentioning that Mega Man ZX has sort of a Pokemon option. You can choose to be a boy Mega Man or a girl Mega Man. I guess she'd be a Mega Woman, but seriously, in the game, when Ale becomes Mega Man, they, they call her Mega Man all the time. She even refers to herself as a Mega Man. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, whatever. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the ZX series at long last. It takes place a certain amount of years after the Zero series. Uh, it's still developed by NT Creates, the people who made the Zero games, and for the most part, this game feels exactly like the Zero series did. You can tell by, like, the text boxes and the sprites and the backgrounds and stuff. It's very similar to the Zero series, um, and that's not a bad thing at all. That's a great thing. Uh, what makes Mega Man ZX different from the Zero series, uh, well... Sort of different from Zero, Two, and Three, and Four. Um, Zero, One had a, qu a kind of open world kind of thing going on. 
uh, but it was a little bit smaller and contained, and you could always be warped to the level you needed to get to anyway. Uh, but Mega Man ZX is very much like your Metroids, your Symphony of the Nights. Uh, the world is a giant hub world. It's a giant overworld that you're going to be backtracking to places. When you get new upgrades and abilities, you're going to come back to areas and try getting things you couldn't before. Um, there's a map now, so like if you have to get around, you know, you want to consult the map and see where you are in relation to everything else. Although that, the map isn't super helpful, which I'll get into when we uh, get into this playthrough, but uh, this is like a Symphony of the Night, this is like a Metroid. This is a Metroidvania type Mega Man game. Um, but I don't think it's too overwhelming. I, I usually, I'm not big on Metroidvanias, I won't lie. Um, sometimes they do them right, sometimes they do them wrong. And although I think this game has some confusion as to where you're supposed to be going next, I do think that when you know where you're going, it has a very simple thing. There are lots of trance servers that can warp you from place to place, and uh, it's convenient. Yeah, <laughs> Zovent marks the first time that a human is actually the main character of a Mega Man game, and there's actually humans in this game. Ain't that friggin' weird? Now, Vent is a human who stumbles upon Model X, a biometal with the subconscious of our classic legendary hero, Mega Man X, and when he fuses with the biometal, he becomes that Mega Man. So now Vent has all of the abilities of good old Mega Man X, and uh, there are lots of bio metals in this game, so you'll actually be switching from different Mega Mans, and uh, that's pretty fantastic. You know, instead of having just specific powers from bosses, you're unlocking actual playstyles from bosses. You're discovering new ways to kick ass, and I think that's pretty friggin' cool. So, as Model X, we have all the things that regular Mega Man X had. He has the pellets, the yellow lemons, he could charge it up for a green shot, charge it up more for a blue shot, charge it up even more, and you can have a big, swirly, crazy shot that's super powerful. Uh, the same rules apply. You can climb up walls by jumping at them repeatedly. You can dash with the L button. Uh, you can rearrange all the buttons to whatever you want in the options, by the way. Uh, so if you don't want to dash with L, you can also double tap by pushing right on the control pad, as always. And, um... There's no duck option. <laughs> this is not Mega Man X5. You are not allowed to duck, but uh, so far so good, you know? It's nice to be playing as X again, because in the Zero series, you were always Zero, and uh, nothing about nothing against his dinky little Z-Buster that he held in his hands, but uh, there is a certain satisfaction with being Mega Man X, and uh, it's nice to be running around as the advanced 21XX Blue Bomber and uh, blasting foes with his Mega Buster. You feel badass. So this is the first area in the game, Area A. It's a good, nice tutorial area, not too difficult. Uh, your Mega Buster is super powerful. As always, enemies will drop health power-ups. Uh, they will also drop weapon energy, which we don't need yet, because Mega Man X has no weapon energy to spend. Um, and you can also find energy crystals, which we'll use to buy things later. So keep an eye out for that. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our first boss. Okay, so our snake friend is actually a little bit deceptively hard for the first boss. He can actually kill you if you're not prepared for him. Um, he has basically three basic attacks. He shoots that yellow acid, the green acid rather, 
uh, whenever his jewels light up. And he'll always aim for where you are, so you just want to watch out for that. Uh, occasionally, he'll go off to the side and slam his tail along the ground, causing rocks to fly at you. But as long as you're all the way at the edge and you just jump at the right time, you can dodge him. And uh, sometimes he'll try and zoom right towards you to go to the other side of the screen, at which case you might want to be a little bit closer to him so that you can get under the, the curvature, if that's right, and then dash under the tail as he slides by. But um, keep charging up that Mega Buster, and uh, also if you get closer to him, his head, his head bends downwards a lot more, uh, making it easier to reach his head from the, from the bottom, so... It's the first boss, it shouldn't give you too much trouble, but, uh, you know. It's certainly harder than, say, the Mega Man X2 first boss, or something like that, you know. You can still die if you're not paying attention. Uh, <laughs> just like the Zero series, the Mega Man ZX series is not as easy as classic Mega Man. It, it hopes that you understand the stuff, it hopes that you're used to trial and error, it hopes that, uh... You pay attention to boss patterns, because these guys do not screw around. They will kill you. So right now we're in a trans server room. That yellow contraption in the background is essentially the save room. It refills all of your health as well. So when you come in here, again, these kind of staples are in Metroid and Castlevania, where you come to the save room and it can refill all your health and stuff, so... Uh, <laughs> This is a Metroidvania Mega Man game, so how about that? In the bottom left and right, it tells you that Area 2 and Area 2 are over there. So you know that, like, uh, this is in the middle of Area 2. And you can look at that to see which direction goes to what area. Most don't go to the same place. Most trans server rooms tell you Area C is over here, so look out for that. Uh, you can also use the trans server to warp to other trans servers when you unlock them. Uh, so it's a good shortcut teleportation system, uh, very similar to Symphony of the Night's magical, mm, weird portal things that transported you all around Dracula's castle. But, uh, anywho. Uh, question. In the Zero series, I liked to voice act for the characters because the game did not have voice acting. Uh, ZX doesn't really have voice acting either. At least not in the Canadian version of the game. It did. I think it does in, J in the Japanese version, but... Uh, yeah, I'm just curious, did people like me voice acting the characters in the Zero playthroughs, or do you think that's kind of hokey and I shouldn't do that anymore? Because <laughs> I could do that again, whatever. I'll stretch my acting talents, for I am a Shakespearean actor in my head. But uh, you, you only have three save files in Mega Man ZX, by the way. You're allowed three different separate save files for a vent, ale, easy, normal, or hard playthrough. Uh, I'm playing on normal mode, not because I can't beat hard mode, but because only in normal and easy can you find life ups and sub tanks and stuff. And I want to show those locations off. Um, and in hard mode, you don't get those at all. So, you, you get like one sub-tank from one side mission, but uh, I want to show where all the life-ups and sub-tanks are. I want to show what a normal person playing the game should expect from a normal playthrough of Mega Man ZX. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, we have two missions. We can locate our friend Jiro, who got forced off by Mavericks, or we could do a test. Well, since Jiro is only in the next room, well, technically, uh... The test isn't really that far away either, but uh, I'm going to do the Locate Jiro side quest. So right now the map is not filled in, but when it does get filled in, we'll be able to see everything besides areas A1 and A2. All of the different locations and backgrounds are listed by alphabet, so... This is area A. The opening area is area A. And it is a fantastic musical piece, by the way. This game is a fantastic soundtrack overall, but, uh... Look at that wall jumping. Any of you guys, in part two, we're gonna be going to area B to find our friend Jiro. See you then.